Welcome to 365 Christian Men, where every day we aim to inspire and encourage with real life stories about men. August 16th, Michael Lyles. Michael Lyles is a psychiatrist in Georgia who loves God and who demonstrates it by loving the people God has created. Today's story takes place when Michael was 14 years old and attending a new school in a new city. Here's what happened. Sometimes you get betrayed. What do you do with the pain? New to Detroit, Michael Lyles was in ninth grade at Kettering High School, and the walk from school to home was about two miles long. September in Michigan, especially in the heart of the concrete city, can be extremely hot. So Michael had a strategic routine to avoid getting overheated. Most days, his plan was to walk the first mile and then duck into the air-conditioned Sears and Roebuck for a short break before he tackled the second hot mile. Sears had a couple of cafe tables and sold drinks, popcorn, and peanuts. But the short break from the sun was only a minor part of Michael's strategy for surviving freshman year in Detroit. The major part was Michael's friend, Bob. Bob played football. He stood 6'3 and weighed about 220 pounds. And Bob was fast. Nobody could catch Bob. Most days, Michael and Bob walked home together, and Michael thought it was a great arrangement. This one afternoon, Michael and Bob had their snacks in the nice, cool department store, and Bob always managed to finish his before leaving the store. But on this day, Michael decided to finish his popcorn on the way home. Michael said, walking through a gang-infested neighborhood with food in your hand is never a smart idea. I should have known. Along the way, a group of five tough-looking guys approached them, intent on one thing. They demanded Michael's popcorn. You can't have my popcorn, he said. He had no problem standing up to these guys because Bob had his back. There's two of us, but it's more like three since he's so big. After he said this, Michael turned to point to Bob, but Bob was gone. We don't see nobody but you, the leader said. The violent gang beat Michael, ripped off his clothes, cut him with a knife, and walked away with all his money and his popcorn. As for Bob, as soon as the trouble started, he had run off like the hired hand Jesus described, who when he saw the wolf coming, took off running. After the assault, that's what stuck in Michael's mind most. It wasn't the pain, the indignity, or the missing popcorn, but the anger. Bob should have stuck around to defend him. Bob should have had his back. That's why I was walking with the big guy. I thought that I would be safe, Michael said. The physical scars from the assault healed and the humiliation of picking his battered self up off the sidewalk ended. However, the scary memories remained. After that experience, Michael had to make a choice. He was at that age when many beliefs are formed. And Bob abandoning him could have shaped Michael's attitude. But Michael had recently become a disciple, like an apprentice, to Jesus. And Michael was learning to think like Jesus. Michael chose to forgive Bob and move on. That was what Jesus taught. Today, Dr. Michael Lyles sits with people who are holding on to feelings and memories that hamper their lives. He helps people sort through distorted thinking and teaches them strategies to overcome old traumas. He knows from personal experience such events can beat people down, knock the joy out of living, and leave them feeling angry and abandoned if they allow it. Michael teaches the Bible is relevant to all of life or not relevant at all, and that it's a book of resilience, not just a book of trauma. It is a book full of powerful affirmations written to show people the path to recovery. In Matthew 17, 22 and 23, it says, when they came together in Galilee, he said to them, the son of man is going to be delivered into the hands of men. They will kill him. And on the third day, he will be raised to life. And the disciples were filled with grief. Are there past hurts that could be stealing your joy? Is there some old pain in your life that you have been holding on to? 
Sometimes you get betrayed. What do you do with the pain? Thank you for listening to today's story. Every day of the year, our hope is to inspire you with real life stories of faithful men who have gone before us. Hebrews 12.1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that so easily ensnares us. Let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Join us tomorrow for another story at 365christianmen.com.